For the last six years, by this administration, we've been told that our mounting debts don't matter. We've been told that the anxiety Americans feel about rising health care costs and stagnant wages are an illusion. We've been told that climate change is a hoax. We've been told that tough talk and an ill-conceived war can replace diplomacy and that strategy and foresight is unnecessary. We just need to send the troops in. And when all, all else fails, when Katrina happens, or the death toll in Iraq mounts, we've been told that the crises are somebody else's fault. We're distracted from our real failures. We're told to blame the other party, or gay people, or immigrants. A politics of blame and a politics of fear. That kind of politics has to stop. That kind of quackery has to stop. We don't need any more hate. We, we don't need any more faith healers and snake oil salesmen. We don't need any kind of okie doke. We don't need to be bamboozled. We need some doctors who are on the case to take the bullets out. But before we can start that work, let me say this. We need to end this war in Iraq, which has cost our country and our people so much. I am proud that I opposed it from the very start, back in 2002 when it wasn't popular to be against this war. I believed then that it would lead to disaster. I believed then that it would cost us our brave young servicemen and women mired in a situation that has turned into a civil war. This war never should have been authorized by Congress, should have never been waged, and it's time once and for all to bring our troops home. It is time to recognize that American soldiers can't solve Iraq's political differences or ethnic rivalries. That's why I introduced a plan back in January that would have begun withdrawing our combat forces on May 1st, five days ago. Would have brought them home by March 31st of next year while forcing the Iraqi government to meet its obligations. This is basically the plan that the President vetoed this week, defying not just the majority of Congress, but the will of the American people. But rest assured, this veto is not the last word. If the President continues to stubbornly ignore the realities in Iraq, we intend to force our colleagues in the Senate and the House to take vote after vote after vote after vote after vote after vote until we finally overcome his veto or that he understands that he has to change course. We need 16 Republican votes in the Senate to override a veto. Now, I'm not going to call out names, but there's a Republican right here in Louisiana who needs to vote to end this war. Tomorrow, I'll be in Iowa, and there's a senator there who votes who needs to vote to end this war. I need the mayors and students here to call their senators and congressmen too. Here's the only chance we have to truly end this war. That's not symbolic. This is real. 16 votes and we can turn the page on this war. 16 votes and we can start bringing our men and women home. 16 votes, not a lot of votes. We can do it if our voices join together to make it happen.